I'm Dr. Steve Wyatt. I'm an addiction psychiatrist that works at Middlesex Hospital in Middletown, Connecticut. Addiction psychiatry is a psychiatrist that has a particular interest in working with people that have not only a mental health problem, but a substance use problem, and that's alcohol and other drugs, and nicotine or cigarettes. There are three primary preventative behaviors that cause the majority of sickness and death in the world. It's the first is cigarettes, the second is diet and exercise, and the third is alcohol. So one would really wonder, if everyone knows it's so bad, why do people continue to smoke? And the question is baffling, uh, but at the same time, the answer is that it makes people feel good. And that's what we're going to explore here, the whole idea of pleasure. Why do some activities make us feel good, even great? There's a whole world of pleasure, and the human body is designed to enjoy it. Good music, games, sports, a comfortable bed when you're tired, or just being around people we like are some of the things that can give us pleasure. With each of these events, we experience a chemical surge in the brain. That chemical is dopamine, and when it hits a specific area of the brain, called the nucleus accumbens, we feel happy and satisfied. This is something that we all experience. It's why we enjoy a good meal. It's why we might enjoy laughing with friends. It's all the things that, that make us feel good. Things that, that sort of empower the body can result in a surge of dopamine into this nucleus accumbens so that we want to do it again. So it's there really to promote healthy activities. The brain is made up of billions of cells the cells in the brain responsible for relaying messages within the brain are called neurons. The interactions between these neurons result in how people think, move, feel. A neuron has four distinct regions, the cell body, a dendrite, which is a receiving end of the neuron, an axon, which is the sending end of the neuron, and a synapse, which is between the axon and the dendrite, the sender and the receiver. The most important neurotransmitter for sending signals of pleasure is dopamine. And they move across this tiny space called the synapse between the two neurons. And at the other side, there are special receptors that are waiting to receive this dopamine. A healthy brain circulates just the right amount of dopamine. Let's see how it works. Touch the smart board or use your mouse to click on different scenes of young people enjoying food, sports, or music. Don't drop it! Run! Jeez, he's fast. He's really cute, isn't he? Who? Ron? No, Derek. He made varsity soccer last week and he's so Ooh. sweet. Karen loves Derek. Karen loves Hey, Derek. how about letting us in on the game? Yeah, what is this, touch football? We're pretty fast, we can play too. No, you're not. Really? I've been chasing you since the day you were born, little man. All right, good game, everybody. Yeah, to victory. Anybody up for a bike ride? Are you serious? I can't even move. Yes, I'm serious. If this was a triathlon, biking would be the second sport. We'd have to swim to a finish line. No way. No triathlons for me. So we'll make it worth our while. We'll bike around the lake, then we'll head over to Bart's ice cream. Bart's I can do. But can we bike over the short way? I say the long way. Me too. All right. First one to Bart's wins. This teenager is experiencing a nice, steady flow of dopamine. Molecules of dopamine leave the neuron, move across the synapse to a receptor, lock into it, then move back again for reuptake. The amount of dopamine within the synapse of a person's brain at any given time will tell you how happy that person may be feeling. And there are billions of synapses. In fact, it's been estimated that there are more synapses in the human brain than there are stars in the galaxy. It's a very complex and beautifully balanced system. No, please, after you. All right, I'm such a gentleman. So, nobody's ever been here before, right? Hope it's just not a raw fish. It's a whole Japanese restaurant. They've got lots of good stuff. The dumplings are good. And the vegetables fried up in batter. What's that called? 
Tempura? Yeah, tempura. That's always good. I don't know. It's deep fried and has lots of calories. Calories? You don't need to worry about calories. I mean, I burn off all mine playing basketball, and you burn off all yours on the dance studio. Yeah, she's going to try out for one of those TV shows, like America's Got Talent. You're good. Really good. I know. We were at the last school dance together. She needs a real partner to keep up with what she can do. A real partner? Yeah, someone with real training who can keep up with me. No, seriously, what are you talking about? Just some guys at the dance studio, practice partners. Well, that leads me to be the real partner, then. So, what are we going to have? Shrimp looks good. Yeah, it does, but I think we should all get something different and share it. Oh, hey, look, a flaming dish just came out of the kitchen. Awesome! Maybe they can make some of that stuff at our table. Let's try it. This teenager is experiencing a nice, steady flow of dopamine. Molecules of dopamine leave the neuron, move across the synapse to a receptor, lock into it, then move back again for reuptake. Hey, did you see that new show last night? I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. <laughs> you like the size T stuff, right? Yeah, thank you. Hey, where's the little bro? I saw him shoot hoops in the back a little while ago. He's really good. He's somewhere around here, but my mom's watching him, so I don't have to worry. Well, if he came in, I wouldn't mind challenging him to a little game of StarCraft 2. StarCraft 2? I love that game. No matter how many versions of Wii Sports they come out with, they're never gonna top StarCraft 2. Yeah, but Wii Sports has a whole point system. You can gain points and even go pro. Karen, they're talking about video games again. Help! Quick, change the music! Love this one. This teenager is experiencing a nice, steady flow of dopamine. Molecules of dopamine leave the neuron, move across the synapse to a receptor, lock into it, then move back again for reuptake. Unfortunately, it's not just happy events that trigger the movement of dopamine. When someone uses an addictive drug like nicotine, it can cause significant dopamine surges that hit a specific area of the brain, an area called the nucleus accumbens. And when that happens, there's a surge of enjoyment and, and relaxation that they may never have experienced before in their lives. And, and they go outside and they light up a cigarette and they say, wow, these are the greatest things in the world. They relieved all my stress. But the fact is, there are drugs like nicotine that result in an abnormal surge of dopamine within this system that hijack the system, that result in us no longer finding pleasure in some of the things that we really should be taking pleasure in. And instead, we get addicted to this profound feeling of enjoyment from things that are totally unnatural and result in an unhealthy behavior. Why does this man enjoy smoking? To understand that, we need to look at a second neurotransmitter that's also important to our sense of well-being, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, or ACH, also moves from neuron to neuron just like dopamine, from the axon of one neuron to the dendrite of another. The extra acetylcholine, plus the extra dopamine that it releases, allows the smoker to feel good. But something else is happening, and it's not just a feeling. A permanent physical change occurs when a person keeps smoking tobacco. The brain itself becomes different. Too many acetylcholine molecules overwhelm the normal number of acetylcholine receptors. The molecules have nowhere to go, so the brain grows more receptors just to take care of them. And all those receptors, old and new, send signals to release dopamine. When a person smokes a cigarette, the smoke goes into the lungs and it's taken to the brain very rapidly. And it excites the brain in a way that sends a amount of chemical into the brain that overwhelms it. And when that happens, the brain tries to adapt to it. And if you do something 20 times a day, and in fact, when you puff on a cigarette, you take about 10 puffs per cigarette, and you smoke 20 cigarettes in a day, you're doing something 200 times a day. Now, if you were gonna try to learn to shoot free throws and you shot 200 free throws a day, you'd get pretty good at it. Well, when this happens with cigarettes, 
It's affecting specific chemicals in the brain. And when you take the cigarettes away, they start to say, hey, wait a second, where did that go? We've, we've now adjusted to having that and, and we're missing it. And when you've taken or used something like a cigarette numerous times throughout the day for days, weeks, months, years, you take it away, the brain is saying, we've adapted to that. We've tried to, to be normal in our function with you bathing us with this drug for so many years, and now to take it away, we feel abnormal, and we're gonna make you feel abnormal physically without it. As long as the smoker keeps those cigarettes coming, his brain feels fine. But when he or she stops, the brain, and therefore the person, gets mighty uncomfortable. Let's take a look at the same group of teenagers you just watched in the same settings, except in these cases, someone has become addicted to cigarettes. He's really cute, isn't he? Who, Ron? No, Derek. He made varsity soccer last week and he's so sweet. I just wish he didn't smell like cigarettes all the time. Ugh. What do you mean, yuck? You only gave up smoking two months ago. I know, and I already can't stand to be around them. Hey, how about letting us into the game? Yeah, what is this, touch football? We're pretty fast, we can play too. No, you're not. Really? I've been chasing you since the day you were born, little man. All right, good game, everybody. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Man, golly, breathe. You have some water? Here you go. You know, Derek, you could do so much more if you didn't smoke. I mean, you start off fast, really fast, but then you just get wiped out. It's kind of pathetic. I'll be quiet. I know I should quit. I try to, I just can't stop. As a matter of fact, I'll go for a cigarette right now. Please, I'm way too hot to even be around smoke. What about something cold? Bart's ice cream is just a half a mile from here if we take Bridge Street. Bart's ice cream? I could go for that. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Woo, let's go. You guys yeah. go ahead. I'm gonna go to a store that won't hassle me over buying a dump pack of cigarettes. I'll see you later. The body actually starts to go into withdrawal from its last cigarette about 40 minutes after smoking. And so a person starts to feel that thirst. They start to feel, wow, something's missing. And then they think, oh, if I could just smoke a cigarette, I'd feel better. No, please, after you. Yeah, all right. So nobody's been here before, right? I just hope they have more than raw fish. It's a whole Japanese restaurant. They've got lots of stuff. The dumplings are good, and the vegetables all fried up in batter, they're really crunchy. What's that called? Tempura. Yeah, tempura, that's always good. I don't know, deep fried, lots of calories. Calories nothing, you look fantastic. Oh my goodness, I wish we could smoke in here. I can't believe I forgot my cigarettes. And you guys got a cigarette? I thought your dance teacher wanted you to quit smoking. What does she know? And I'm already a better dancer than anyone there. I know, I saw your moves in the last school dance. Yeah, she needs a real partner to keep up with what she can do. A real partner? Yeah, a real partner. Someone who can actually lift me up. Hey, there's a convenience store right across the street, isn't there? Come on, Karen, we just got here. Let's get like some, some dish, like a shrimp. The shrimp looks good. Yeah, whatever. Just order for me and I'll be back in a few minutes, okay? Can you let me out? Come on, Karen, let's order a couple dishes. Maybe like shrimp and tempura. We can share. Sound good? Hey, look, the flaming dish just came out of the kitchen. Awesome! Maybe they can cook something like that at our table. Let's try it. The yeah. body actually starts to go into withdrawal from its last cigarette about 40 minutes after smoking. And so a person starts to feel that thirst. They start to feel, wow, something's missing. And then they think, oh, if I could just smoke a cigarette, I'd feel better. Oh my gosh, did you see that new show last yeah. night? I can't believe they did that. Hey, so this are your parents home? Yeah, my mom's upstairs working on a paper or something. Some deadline tomorrow? My mom works at home a lot. Yeah, she likes to be home until Tom gets off the bus. Oh, cool. Either you got a cigarette? No, we don't smoke. 
I mean, I don't. Do you? Well, I did a couple times at camp last summer, but I had to quit as soon as I came home. My parents don't let anyone smoke in the house, and my mom would kill me! That's too bad. And you got a cigarette? Nah, man. Nah. How about you? Oh, yeah. Um, just don't tell them. Hey! I said no smoking in here! She's right, Brian. Her mom will get really ticked off. Chill out, Brian. You're totally having a nicotine fit. Oh, sweet lighter. Give me that. I'll just go find somewhere else to smoke. The body actually starts to go into withdrawal from its last cigarette about 40 minutes after smoking. And so a person starts to feel that thirst. They start to feel, wow, something's missing. And then they think, oh, if I could just smoke a cigarette, I'd feel better. A huge part of the reason why people continue to smoke cigarettes is because they smoke cigarettes. Human beings, unfortunately, have this consciousness, this memory of an old adaptation to a, an addiction. We know where we can buy a pack of cigarettes. We see a friend with a cigarette and we start thinking about what it was like in the past to smoke that cigarette. And unfortunately, it rekindles our desire to smoke and we start smoking again. We never lose that. We always have that, that little bit of drive that says, wow, I remember what that boost of dopamine was like at one time, and we start smoking again. It's a terrible problem that so many people struggle with so long to try to stop smoking cigarettes, and then 5, 10, 15 years later, they pick it up again, much to their chagrin often, but that's how it works. Quitting cigarettes is tough, but it can be done. Over time, the extra acetylcholine receptors die off. The body and brain readjust to a normal amount of dopamine. The cravings subside. The former smoker now has a nicotine-free body. Remember, your happiness, health, and money belong to you.